North London Derby, Europa League versus Premier League, and would you name your son Granite? All on Arsenal Nation this week. Hello, welcome to Arsenal Nation, and what a week to have a discussion fresh off the back of the North London Derby. 2-0, just in case you missed it, 2-0. Got two very special guests who have joined us now. First of all, Football Daily's Patrick Van Straten. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. And Football.London journalist Kevin Byrne. Thank you very much. Boys, you're getting on very, very well so far, so we want to divide opinion a little bit and go to our first section. We need to talk about the North London derby. How could we not talk about it? It's nice to have something good to talk about, isn't it? First of all, Hector Bellerin, he's very active on social media. You might have noticed this. If you don't follow him, this is what he said, say no more, hashtag come on you gunners. And also went on to be quoted, this will shut some mouths up, won't it? Boys, my question to you is, is it going to shut some mouths up? What do you reckon, Pat? Uh, I don't know. I mean, look, it's a great result. I'm really delighted about it. And I like that Bayerine and uh, Shkodra Mustafi came out and were pretty punchy about it. Mm. Uh, they were obviously pleased with the result. And um, I think that it's something we should celebrate. But at the same time, I think that the critics of the club, their contention is that we're inconsistent, not that we're never good. Uh, we were really, really good on the day. But I think what we need to see is this form continue over the rest of the season. Maybe some other big performances in big games will so go some way to shutting those people up permanently. Don't get ahead of ourselves, basically, is what you're saying. Well, look, I think celebrate for now. You know, it's one result. But I want to see this next week against Burnley. I want to see it against Man United when we eventually play them. You know, that's what I think will really change people's minds about Arsenal. All right, Kevin, Pat wants consistency. What do you want? Yeah, it's it's got to just be the first step in a long process of building that consistency. Arsenal have had that problem in years past where they put in one big performance but can't really back it up beyond that. So I think this weekend against Burnley is a good test. Uh, mm -hmm. So hopefully they can get a result there because we haven't had very good away form yet this season. Yeah. Meza Ozil comes under a lot of heat quite often, generally because people suggest that he's gone missing. However, Gary Lineker came out after the game and said this, he's a class act just because he doesn't charge around like a headless chicken. He's seen as lacking commitment, utter tosh. Uh, I'm really positive about Meza Ozil and I'm really happy that someone's come out and said this because actually you could argue that he's playing a, a sort of um, awareness which is above, don't take this the wrong way, but most football fans' understanding of the game. <laughs> Pat, what do you think? Uh, I think that actually when I look at the pundits who dislike Meza Ozil, they tend to be midfielders and defenders and the ones who like him tend to be strikers and I think that's because they see what his value is. You know, if you're a midfielder, it probably is frustrating to see him not, you know, tracking back and not doing the work that you get out of, say, Liverpool's attacking midfielders or out of Christian Eriksen. But it's because when he's in the final third, I think he is maybe the best in the world, certainly in the top two or three. And this season he's created huge numbers of chances, over four a game, and there are I think a handful of players across Europe who've done that. I mean, he's a magical player when he's at his best. So next up in We Need to Talk About is what you want to talk about. And we tweeted out and asked you, and we got some interesting responses. And this one we liked very much. So we thought we'd bring it into the show and create some discussion. This was from Arsenal Voice. And he says, would you rather finish second in the league and not win the Europa or finish sixth in the Prem and win the Europa League. And we did have a response on Twitter, actually, from another fan. This is from Gemini Star. And he says, finishing second and not winning the Europa League only gives us a UCL qualification, but winning the Europa League gives us a trophy and UCL qualification. Boys, I'm going to open it up to you. Kevin, what do you think? Going to have to go with finishing second. I know it might not be popular, but for my own mental health, <laughs> I, need, I need to see Arsenal winning regularly. If we finish second, that means that we've had a very strong season. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to go with the second place. Sorry. No, that's all right. Patrick, what do you think? Uh, I, I will disagree. Look, I, I kind of see your argument. Like, I think that it requires you to be better over the course of a season to come second than... Uh, it does to, to win the Europa League. But mm. the Europa League is going to be tough this season. There's yeah. Yeah. Atleti, Dortmund, possibly Napoli. Napoli. Those are really good teams. And it's a trophy we haven't won before. If we win it, then we've got four major trophies in five years, if you don't count yeah. Community Shields, which I don't. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that would be quite exciting. And yeah, the main thing is getting back into the Champions League. Plus, if we go deep in the Europa, then it will give these youngsters an opportunity to play together, to learn together. And I think ultimately that will actually be good for Arsenal's future. We've heard a lot from you, but now it's time to hear from one of our favourite players, the man of the moment, Meza Ozil, in a fun game called Yes or No. No.
I don't know. No. Yes. No. Yes. Snow. His name is Snow, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. What is that? Knee slides. Every man in the summer, man of the team push. No. 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 Please don't disturb us. <laughs> yes, of course. What I love about this segment is it really encourages the players to open up, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> do, do you agree, boys? Uh, all right, this next segment is called What Do You Think Of? And basically, it's us trawling the net far and wide to find the best things we can think to talk about. However, we didn't have to go that far from home to find Eddie and Ketcher, who had a dream debut at the Emirates. Came off the bench, 85th minute, against Norwich in the Carabao Cup. Scored twice, we were 1-0 down at the point. And his Wikipedia page was updated just a minute after this. He's widely considered the best player of all time. All right, boys, obviously it's a little bit of a joke. However, how good is Eddie and Ketcher going to be? What do you think, Kev? Uh, look, he's a very talented young player. Watch him a lot last season for the under-23s and this season as well. Him playing alongside Reese Nelson, there are times where you wonder which one of them is going to be the bigger prospect. But let's not get too carried away. The two goals against Norwich were relatively scrappy. Oh. Norwich are championship side. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's, he's a very good player. He can be very good, but I think it's a few years down the line rather than right now. Patrick, do you think that people put too much pressure on young players? Uh, yes, to a certain extent they do, but I mean, judging by his celebration in that game where he I shoved another guy away from him, <laughs> I don't think the confidence is going to be an issue for him. <laughs> I, I think it's just enthusiasm. Like People like to see these players come through. Alex Iwobi, Hector Bellerin, they do actually make people feel like the club is something more, you know, like they feel a connection to their team. I think that's a, that can only be a good thing. And composure, the ability to find space in the box, those are exciting talents for a young player to have. I mean, obviously I automatically hate all young players because they make me feel old, but, uh, <laughs> but generally I'm really excited to see what happens and it looks like he's going to get a run in the Europa League, so right. who knows where he'll be by the end of the season. OK, next one. What do we think of Olivier Giroud? We won the Puskas Award uh, for the Scorpion Kick. That was on New Year's Day against Palace. It was incredibly beautiful, a sight to behold. And someone tweeted this, when Giroud's, when Giroud shows his grandkids a comp of his top five they're going to think he was better than Pele. So what do we think about that? I mean, oh, yes, he's got, he's got some very attractive goals. They're not all... I mean, not all of his best goals have been attractive goals, have they? Mm. I don't know. It's beautiful goals from a beautiful man. Well, he, I'm glad you said it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he scored legitimately some of the most beautiful goals I've ever seen, or even just been involved in them as well. Favourite? Uh, Favourite one that he's been involved with was Wilshere's against Norwich. Yeah. Yeah. Um, favourite Giroud goal himself would have to be the Palace one. It won the Pushka, so you can't really argue against that. Uh, he is a little bit underrated in the amount of movement he does and the way he can just kind of quickly flick the ball onto someone else into space. So it's I, I think that there are other people who might have a better top five, but I don't think there's anyone who has the range of goals that he does. I actually prefer a, a bunch of other goals from him to that Pushkash award-winning one. I thought, you know, he scored a header against West Brom last season where he held off a defender and knocked it in the top corner, which very few players could do. There's also that one against West Ham where it came over his shoulder, brought it down with his left, nutmegged the keeper with his right. And those are the things that I think sum up what Giroud's good at. He's got an incredible touch. He's got great awareness of the people around him. And I think arguably... 
uh, a compilation of his five best assists would be more watchable than a compilation of his five best goals. Big statement. Do you agree? Comment in the box below. What was your favourite Olivier Giroud goal in an Arsenal shirt? We might just read them out in the next show. OK, next bit. What do you think of this lucky penalty? <laughs> Have a little look at this, boys. I don't know if you've seen it before. It's been making the rounds on social media and on the internet. Hits the crossbar, flies up. I think it's all over. Bounces. Look at that. He doesn't even need to assist it in himself. Bounce, bounce, and into the back of the net. <laughs> How lucky is that? And just maybe a, a lesson there, not to celebrate too quickly if you're a goalkeeper. What I want to know, boys, is what's Arsenal's luckiest moments? Have a little think back. Could be anything. Doesn't have to be on the pitch. Could be off the pitch as well. Arsenal's luckiest moment. Got to go to another penalty that hit the crossbar. Mm. Be, uh, Ruud van Nistelrooy, <laughs> 2003. Without that, we would have lost that game. The Invincibles would never have happened. So I don't think you could really argue for anything else. Mm. Patrick? Mm. God, there are, there are so many, really. I mean, <laughs> like <laughs> Juventus deciding to sell Thierry Henry, that's got to be up there. <laughs> I mean, that's such a huge mistake. But, uh, but probably um, all those Tottenham players deciding that they'd have the lasagna <laughs> that one day at the end of the <laughs> yes. season. Like, that was a pretty good one for us. <laughs> I love that. My favourite one, actually, of recent memory, is another Tottenham uh, theme here. There's a running theme to this show. Is uh, Newcastle beating them 5-1 on the last day of yeah. the season. Arsenal finishing second. Uh, memories to keep uh, very <laughs> sacred for those. Um, all right, now it's time to catch up with our favourite cheeky sport boy, Joel, who went out and about at the North London Derby here at the Emirates uh, and asked a few cheeky questions. Here he is. Cheeky Sport Joel here, outside the Emirates. I'm here to talk to some fans to see how much they know about our club. Let's go. You seem like a confident gooner. Yeah, I'm confident, I'm confident. I know my stuff. Please, can you tell us who this player is? Oh, Francis Jeffers. Oi! How many goals has Thierry Henry got? Is it 2-2-8? Two, two, Oi! Oi, all right! Who's this guy? What? What is this? Now we got to move it. I don't get what's happening here. You just said this is easy and then, and then you, you did a phone a friend. What about this guy over here? Well, hold on, hold on, the name is gone. Oh, my days. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ian Wright. Ian yeah, Wright, right, Yes, I knew it. I'm mad. You're wrong. It's Lewis Borbote, mate. Yeah, it looks hey, like it. Right. Yeah, I know, but it's not him, mate. All right, maybe I don't know as much as I thought I did. Yeah, <laughs> may, may, maybe you don't, maybe you don't. How many Premier League titles have we won under Arsene Wenger? He's got one in yeah? Oh, no. no? Four. It is, it is, she got it right. How many followers does the Arsenal Instagram page have? Is it 10 million? Yeah, it is, it really is. Hey, well done. Well, that's it from me today. My name's Cheeky Sport Joel. I'm here at the Emirates today to test out your knowledge. See you soon on Arsenal Nation. Cheeky Sport Joel there doing what he does best. Joel, we absolutely love you. Well done, love that. Boys, it's now time for the back four. This is a quick fire round. You've got 60 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? Yep, hope so. So do I. <laughs> OK, ready? 60 seconds on the clock, please. First question. The Arsenal 89 documentary came out this week. What's the best ending to a day you have ever had, Patrick? Oh, my God. Uh, walking home drunk from my wedding with my wife, singing Sean Paul. Fabulous. <laughs> Kevin? Uh, husky sliding under the northern lights in Iceland. Oh, my oh, God. Good. I love that. Uh, Lacazette's celebration was stolen by his mate, Quarantine Tolisso. But whose celeb would you steal if you could, Patrick? Oh, easy. Messi holding his shirt up to the Real Madrid fans. Amazing. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Oh, Shavin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's an Arsenal fan in Singapore who named their child after the Arsenal Invincible Lauren when he scored in the North London derby. But which member of this current team would you would you name your child after? Oh my God, uh, Hector Hector Bayerine. That's pretty good. Or Granite Granite Van Straten. That's a solid name. Oh, that is a good name. Okay, go on. I'm gonna have to go back in a few years now. Saul Campbell, so that my kid knows it's never too late to change their mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good answer. Most important question of them all: What colour is North London? Red. Red. Man, man, congratulations. Unless you are Rob Holding, in which case it's sort of burgundy. Nice one, Rob. Uh, boys, thank you very much. You were absolutely wonderful guests. A round of applause, please. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thanks very much. Did you enjoy your time here? Oh, yeah, big time. That's yeah. all right, isn't it? <laughs> So yeah. enthusiastic. And now remember, if you want to get involved in the discussion, just comment in the box below or use the hashtag ArsenalNation and you might be able to have your tweets or your uh, opinions read out on the next show. Uh, thank you very much, boys. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Oh, a really soft applause. <laughs> <laughs>